Welcome to this episode of our program, Arab Affairs. As usual, we will be discussing an important Arab file. Uh, today, we'll be speaking about the Palestinian factions meeting here at the uh, uh, at the new city of Alamein, or the new uh, Alamein uh, city in the north coast. Uh, uh, this important meeting that uh, Egypt has hosted as a step towards unity and dialogue among the uh, Palestinian factions. Um, definitely, Egypt has been exerting its utmost uh, effort and has been giving the Palestinian uh, cause uh, unwavering uh, and historic uh, support. The meeting was uh, 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 the meeting, uh, or right after the meeting, the uh, uh, president or President Abdel Fattah al Sisi uh, received the Palestinian president and spoke of the role Egypt is uh, playing as well as the importance of unity among the Palestinian factions in order to be able to at least achieve uh, uh, a step forward and be able to uh, be ready for any uh, assumption to any uh, uh, um, uh, peace talks, hopefully. We'll be speaking about that in our episode. Before we delve into our discussion, let's first have a quick look on the Arab news that took place during this week, and we'll come back for more discussion. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi received on Monday Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas Abu Mazen. Presidential spokesman Councillor Ahmed Fahmi said that President al-Sisi welcomed the Palestinian president, stressing Egypt's constant and historical support for the Palestinian people. The head of state also welcomed hosting the meeting of the Palestinian factions, which was held on Sunday at New Alamein City and was attended by the Palestinian president. For his part, the Palestinian president expressed gratitude and appreciation for Egypt's support for the Palestinian cause, pointing out that the factions meeting comes at a time and circumstances that necessitate the national reconciliation. The spokesman added that the meeting tackled means of coordinating visions and stances regarding the Palestinian cause, including reviving the Middle East peace process based on a two-state solution. Foreign Minister Sameh Shukri has received a phone call from U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. During their telephone conversation, Blinken stressed U.S. keenness to coordinate efforts with Egypt to solve the situation in Sudan. The two sides discussed strengthening bilateral ties and highlighted partnership between the two countries. They also reviewed the current situation in the Middle East region, including Libya and the other issues of mutual concern. The UN sounded the alarm Wednesday of impending famine in Sudan, where months of war have hit food supplies and pushed nearly 4 million people to flee the fighting. The UN's Food and Agriculture Organization announced that over 20.3 million people, representing more than 42% of the population in the country, are experiencing high levels of acute food insecurity. The UN warned on Wednesday that in a new escalation of an already disastrous humanitarian situation, 6.3 million people are one step away from famine. The fighting has destroyed critical infrastructure, severely hampered agriculture and blocked the delivery of crucial aid. More than half of the population is facing acute hunger in West Darfur, which has seen some of the worst clashes, including civilians targeted for their ethnicity and mass sexual violence. At least seven people, including two civilians, were killed when Daesh terrorists attacked a convoy of oil tankers guarded by the army in the Syrian desert on Tuesday. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said that five regime forces and two drivers had been killed in the armed attack by the terrorists in the east of Hama province. The Britain-based monitor said that the attackers used machine guns and rocket-propelled grenades, which relies on a wide network of sources inside Syria. Tunisian President Kais Saeed has dismissed Prime Minister Najla Boudin, the first woman to lead a government in North African country. Saeed immediately appointed in her place Ahmad Hachani, who until now worked at the Tunisian Central Bank and studied law at the University of Tunis, where Saeed taught. 
the new head of government, a figure unknown to the general public, was immediately sworn in before the president. Boudin was appointed by Saeed on October 11, 2021, two and a half months after the president granted himself sweeping powers on July 25 by dismissing his then prime minister and suspending parliament. Lebanon on Friday mourned those killed in the port blast that devastated Beirut three years ago as religious leaders and rights groups decried the lack of accountability among political leaders who stymied the official investigation. The explosion killed at least 220 people and wounded thousands more when hundreds of tons of ammonium nitrate stored in a warehouse detonated on August 4, 2020, sending a huge cloud over the city. Despite the devastation, no senior figures have been held to account and an investigation has been obstructed by legal measures prompting outrage in Lebanon and abroad. Survivors and the families of victims say the lack of accountability has kept them stuck in 2020. The blast struck amid an economic collapse that the World Bank had dubbed one of the worst in recent history and which is widely blamed on a governing elite accused of corruption and mismanagement. Right, welcome back and to highlight the issue we have with us over the phone, uh, Dr. Sharif Amir, uh, uh, Professor of International Relations. Good afternoon to you, Dr. Sharif. Uh, good afternoon. Right, so uh, um, last week we, uh, Egypt hosted uh, this important fac uh, faction or Palestinian factions meeting here at uh, Al Alamein uh, or the new Alamein uh, city. Um, you reading to this uh, 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 important and timely uh, meeting uh, in, in face of the current challenges and the developments in the Palestinian occupied territories? Well, um, I think that uh, what's taking place uh, um, uh, actually in the Middle East is a huge turmoil. We are living now in a, in, a, in a difficult process where there is a new map being reshaped. Um, the, the Palestinian factions, unfortunately, they were battling each other for several years, since 2009. But Egypt uh, didn't stop its uh, efforts through its intelligence uh, apparatus to mediate between Gaza and Ramallah. And now we witness also uh, another uh, negative development in uh, the Ain al Halwa uh, um, camp, refugee camp in Lebanon. Yes. The fighting is still going on there. So I think Egypt wants to give uh, the Palestinians a clear message that it's time to unite. It's time to work together. It's time to find uh, common ground to accept the, uh, the legitimate authority of the Palestinian people, which is the Palestinian Authority in Ramallah, headed by President Mahmoud Abbas Abu Mazen. I think also that President Sisi, when he met President Abu Mazen, uh, it's a message that Egypt recognizes only the Palestinian Authority as the legitimate authority. That does not mean that we, we close the doors in, 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 in talking with uh, the Hamas or the Jihad, uh, Islamic Jihad, um, but we are telling them also that uh, the unity of the Palestinian camp is essential. We all know that now uh, many, many um, peace opportunities uh, in sitting uh, on the negotiation table with the Israelis have been missed because the factions in the Palestinian camp were uh, separated by all these hostile actions. Mm. Now the task is more difficult because the, um, the Hebrew state, Israel, is living since 1948 in uh, something that has never happened before, which is the division inside the state of Israel. 
concerning the judicial reform, uh, which is supported by uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Itamar Ben Gvir and um, many of the hardliners in the government. So the Israelis are not uh, prepared now to sit on a negotiating table. Mm. So maybe if, if the Arab camp will try to um, manage to mend all defenses during this time, it could be a good opportunity. But as long as there is this disruption inside of Israel itself, there is no way that there will be negotiations about peace because it's a decisive moment for the Israelis. It could threaten the existence of the state itself. Uh, and if the right wing wins, um, I think that the Palestinians will lose, will lose a lot and there will be more confrontation. And at that time, in both cases, they have to be united, whether in war or in peace. Right, uh, uh, Dr. Sharif, we're speaking here about uh, 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 Egypt always mediating and uh, uh, being an acceptable mediator uh, 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 among the different factions. Uh, and we're not just speaking about the Palestinian uh, cause, but we're speaking about Egypt as a mediator in different cases. But here, let me, uh, we're speaking about the Palestinian cause. So, uh, how do you view the Egyptian unwavering support for the Palestinian cause so far and Egypt's constant policy towards the cause? Uh, I hear you very, very uh, the, the sound of the, the quality of the sound. Again, again. How yeah. do you view Egypt. Egypt's unwavering support for the Palestinian cause? and uh, uh, its efforts exerted in this domain over the decades and particularly uh, the, uh, at this very particular time? Uh, you're speaking in, uh, generally about the Arab... Uh, the no, Arab, I'm speaking uh, about war. Egypt. I'm speaking yeah. about Egypt. Yeah. Egypt's unwavering well, support yeah. for uh, the Palestinian Egypt cause. has its mm -hmm. unconditional support, of course. We have shown this decade uh, since the last century, and Egypt, Egypt's diplomacy is firm in defending their goals. And I think that even the Israelis know, uh, the Israelis know that very well that Egypt is standing firm in defending the Palestinian cause, even if there is this, this, uh, um, this infighting inside their camp, but they know that Egypt is very vigilant. We always work to ensure the security of the civilians in the Palestinian camp. We don't take sides uh, openly uh, to any, again, any camp against the other. We, we, we recognize only one Palestinian authority, but also we defend the Palestinian people because they are the civilians who pay the price and that's why the support is unconditional. The support is firm, and it didn't, and it won't change, because it's a just cause to defend it. We all know also that the international community recognizes also Egypt's role in preserving peace, and they know that uh, it's thanks to Egypt that the, the international community, since the late Yasser Arafat, listened to to the Palestinian cause because Egypt pushed this case in all the international arena. Everywhere we brought up the question of Palestinian uh, refugees, uh, the Palestinian state, and we're still doing it. Whether there is uh, hostile actions inside the Palestinian camp or not, we, are, we have our own line of uh, unconditional support, but we have our support towards peace because, unfortunately, there is other forces outside this region. We used to try to intervene in the Palestinian coast by pushing some factions towards war and launching rockets towards Israel. We, don't, we never supported that. We support only peaceful approach to the solution. As President of the Fatah, he said it several times, this 
the, the Palestinian cause has to be solved peacefully by recognizing a Palestinian state. And this is not only our voice, this is the voice of the international community, but even when Arab Spring took place and even all what took place in, in the region and the instability, we didn't forget the Palestinian question. We supported it and we're still doing it. And I think that sooner or later, the Palestinians themselves, they will find that Egypt was the only uh, backbone for them in this struggle. And I, I, we repeat again, we have a peaceful approach. We don't incite for violence. We don't incite for anything, but only even if there is settlement, even if there is exploitation of the land, we call for the calm, and we then take uh, the step towards diplomacy and the United Nations. Yes, this indeed. is Egypt's diplomacy. This is Egypt's way of solving issues. It's through peaceful negotiation, whatever it takes, whatever effort it needs, but peace is priceless, and that's, I think, that the Palestinians know that Egypt will be always there for them. Yes. Uh, that is the constant policy of uh, Egypt, Dr. Sharif Amir, uh, Professor of International Relations. We thank you so much for being with us and for your input here. Um, definitely, this is the constant uh, policy towards all uh, of Egypt, definitely towards all the causes. Egypt always uh, supports the, a political solution, uh, a peaceful one that is uh, built on legitimacy and uh, legal approach. Uh, before we move on with our discussion, let's have this quick report and we'll come back for more discussion. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas concluded the Palestinian factions meeting in the new Alamein city in Egypt, saying internal rifts should end immediately. Abbas said the internal divisions among Palestinian factions should be ended immediately and that elections are the means of achieving this end. Abbas was reading the final communique of a meeting of the Palestinian factions general secretaries that was sponsored by Egypt. The Palestinian president described the meeting as an important step for launching a dialogue over the Palestinian cause and called for forming a committee to continue the dialogue over different issues related to ending the rift and achieving national unity. Abbas urged the committee to finalize its tasks as soon as possible, saying he hopes the upcoming factions meeting in Cairo will declare the end of the Palestinian rift. The Palestinian leader also said the general secretaries of the Palestinian factions who attended the meeting thanked President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi for hosting the meeting and for his support for the Palestinian people. The meeting that was chaired by Abbas discussed the latest developments in the Palestinian occupied territories and means of gaining back national unity in order to confront challenges facing the Palestinian nation in its strive to restore its non-alienable rights and establish an independent and sovereign Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital. Right, welcome back and uh, uh, we have with us over the phone uh, Mr. Ramzi Khouri, Palestinian uh, journalist. Uh, good afternoon to you, sir. Hello? 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 Yes, Mr. Ramzi. I can't, uh, the, vo the voice is very, very far, I can't hear. I'll try to raise my voice. And okay, all right. Okay. So, uh, uh, first, let me take here your reading to this important uh, Palestinian uh, factions meeting. And uh, as it, it was said, uh, it was seen as a first step and important step towards uh, dialogue and unity among the Palestinian factions. How do you read this meeting? How do you view 
such a step and the importance of it? Um, the, meet, the meeting is extremely important if it is able to reach uh, an agreement. Um, and the agreement is not just about ending the division between the Palestinians. Uh, it, is, uh, it has to be an agreement that actually reaches a decision on elections. In Palestine, we haven't had elections since 2006. The, uh, we need uh, elections for the Palestinian Legislative Council. Uh, we need uh, elections uh, that would actually elect the president. And obviously, uh, the PLO also needs an, uh, an election of its national uh, council. Uh, but uh, so if they are able uh, to reach a mechanism that will take them uh, to elections uh, under full agreement of all of the groups, all of, all of the Palestinian groups that are participating, then everything is going to be good and fantastic. If not, then uh, this is just another station uh, of several stations that uh, Egypt has hosted uh, in order for us to be able to get to that point. Mr. Ramzi, okay, let me here discuss it frankly. What is the problem? I mean, yes, Egypt has been uh, exerting its utmost effort and giving its unwavering support for the Palestinian factions, for the Palestinian cause. As uh, possible, uh, 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 trying to reach uh, 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 a positive position uh, uh, um, in, this, in, in the stalemate of the Palestinian Israeli cause. But, uh, uh, sir, what is wrong with the Palestinian factions? Why is, uh, is the case of unity a very, very uh, 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 difficult one? And uh, 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 could you even believe that uh, uh, Palestinian factions are uh, uh, holding here an, uh, an important meeting? And then after one day, one day, a uh, 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 problem erupts between uh, 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 refugee uh, or, or, or between Palestinians in the refugee camp of Al Halwa in, in Lebanon. How do you view this? Why is that a big problem? Why the Palestinian unity is a big problem? Well, uh, I, uh, I would not connect uh, the Cairo meetings with what went on in Ain al-Hilwa in Lebanon. In Ain al-Hilwa in Lebanon, it's not the Palestinian factions that actually fought. The person who committed a murder and killed a Palestinian official uh, is a member of Jundish Sham, which is a group that is not uh, uh, part and parcel of the Palestinian groups um, and doesn't have any uh, presence inside of Palestine either. Um, so what happened in Ayn al is a separate incident and we should not be connecting the two, incidents, uh, the two issues together. As for why are the Palestinians not agreeing, well, the biggest problem is the occupation. And let me tell you why. When they made the decision to go ahead and, and hold elections, Israel refused to allow the Palestinians to hold elections in Jerusalem. If the Palestinians hold elections without Jerusalem, then there is a very big political problem because the Palestinians would then be endorsing that Jerusalem is not the capital of Palestine. And this is a, 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 a huge problem. This is not a small problem that cannot be reckoned with or it could be bypassed. It won't be bypassed. Um, so there was an agreement previously the, uh, between the Palestinians to go ahead and hold elections. Then Israel destroyed the agreement by simply saying that you can go and hold elections anywhere you like inside of Palestine, the West Bank and Gaza, but Jerusalem is not included. Um, uh, the other differences between uh, the Palestinian uh, um, authority, Fatah, per se, and uh, Hamas and the groups that are in Gaza is also uh, the occupation. And, and let me explain that again. Mr. Ramzi, the Palestinian I'm, I'm, authority I'm, I'm... has the job to uh, spend money on the, uh, on the Palestinian population. It has the job to secure uh, education, health, uh, uh, energy, 
and uh, all of these issues that are usually secured by government. And therefore, the Palestinian Authority is always worried about where is it going to get the money from, the cost. How is it going to be able to continue all of these services that are provided to the Palestinian people, whether in, inside of the West Bank or in Gaza? But Mr. Now, Ramzi, this is not an uh, issue uh, of uh, worry uh, yes, for Hamas but, and uh, Islamic Jihad. Let me hear. Sorry, let me hear a comment here. Uh, uh, Israel is taking all reasons for what it is committing because of the Palestinian inability to reconcile. So this is. This is a reason for Israel to continue on with its uh, 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 policy, saying that the Palestinians themselves are not uh, uh, in unity. Why should we go ahead with any uh, 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 resumption to any, di uh, to any kind of dialogue or even discuss their legitimate rights? When would well, the Palestinians right. recognize right. the importance of being united? Yeah, Israel's stories are not exactly accurate. Uh, Israel does not see any benefit uh, in Palestinian unity or in Palestinians holding elections and having uh, a government. One major road to achieving Palestinian unity is to simply form uh, a national unity government. As simple as that. If a national unity government is formed, um, then the national unity government can take the Palestinians to elections. But then Israel has to accept several things. First of all, Israel has to accept that this Palestinian national unity has Hamas and Islamic Shihad as members of it. Yes. Uh, otherwise, Israel would not allow elections to happen. Mr. Ramzi. Uh, or Israel will boycott the uh, Palestinian national unity government. Yes. And if Israel does that, it means that, they will not, that the Palestinians will not be able to get a penny of their own money. Yes, Mr. Because, Ramzi, because I have... the Palestinian money is hostage. Uh, uh, yes, I have to end here because my time is out, but we need to discuss this once uh, and twice uh, again because this is becoming a, 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 a real uh, a, a of importance. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Ramzi Khouri, uh, a Palestinian journal, uh, journalist, we thank you so much for being with us. And I guess that takes us to the end of this episode next Saturday with Important Data File. Goodbye.